throw some light on what the global talking points as well are this morning. We have Ed Yardini joining in uh, right now. Ed, hi, good morning and good evening to you. Thanks for staying up for us. Uh, just wanted to understand uh, the U.S. jobless, uh, jobless claims at a 10-week high and clearly not going down well with the street. Well, I, I think uh, at, at first when the initial unemployment data came out, uh, it showed that there was a slight increase and uh, the, the bond market and the stock market uh, greeted it rather well because, uh, you know, we're now rooting for uh, for bad news because good news is bad. Uh, we're rooting for a slowdown in the economy, a slowdown in the labor market so that the Fed doesn't continue to raise uh, interest rates. I, I think what really uh, hit the market hard was, of course, the sell-off in the banks, which was related to uh, the SVB uh, bank problem, um, as well as uh, some uh, more more problems in the cryptocurrency market. You know, also throwing light then, Ed, on what uh, Jerome Powell's commentary was, a uh, pretty hawkish one would say, and it doesn't yeah. seem like, you know, the Fed is quite done with uh, the interest rate hikes. Right. Well, you know, he, it seems as though every time he speaks, he kind of, uh, one time he seems more hawkish, the next time he seems less, less hawkish. Uh, back uh, on February 1st, when he gave his press conference, uh, he mentioned the word disinflation several times, and everybody concluded that he had turned less hawkish. It seems as though he's kind of changing his tune, uh, depending on what the latest set of data uh, says. I, I hope the Fed uh, kind of sticks to its commitment uh, to raise interest rates to a reasonably restrictive level, keep them there, and then let, let them work. It's going to take some time. The Fed, uh, the Fed has actually said that uh, on a consensus basis, they would like to get the um, inflation rate down to 2% in 2025. I think that's very reasonable, uh, but uh, they shouldn't panic here with every single economic indicator and move more aggressively than they've already said that they would. Uh, Yet I look at uh, the jobless data and then I compare with what the U.S. Uh, major tech companies are doing. They are in a process of layoff, whether it is Alphabet or whether it is Apple or even yeah. for that matter, Facebook stroke Meta. So one side, the U.S. economy is losing high-end jobs, but mm -hmm. the labor market conditions are still not looking sticky. They're still vibrant. So mm -hmm. are we looking at the real relevant jobs data? Well, it's a very complicated uh, job market. Uh, we certainly are hearing about lots of uh, layoffs in the tech industry. And by the way, they're global layoffs, so it's not all in the United States. And the other thing is uh, a lot of those people who are getting losing their jobs uh, get a severance pa package. They get some money uh, when, when they go out the door, and so they don't Im immediately uh, go and file for unemployment claims. And some of them may very well find a job very quickly because uh, they they have skills uh, that uh, are, are still needed, maybe in if not in one company, then in another company. But we're seeing a tremendous amount of uh, demand for labor is in the uh, hospital and healthcare sector, and of course, in the uh, food services sector. I think some of this may actually be related to the aging of the baby boomers. You know, the baby boomers are getting older, they're retiring, they're moving into uh, retirement homes, and uh, they don't like to cook for, cook for themselves. Uh, so there's been a tremendous increase in demand for uh, for restaurants. And uh, as a result, uh, we have a shortage of uh, restaurant workers. And the same thing goes for the uh, healthcare system. Uh, the baby boomers are uh, kind of overwhelming in the healthcare system, and there just uh, aren't enough employees to satisfy all that demand. So some of this is demographically related, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, it sure is. Ed, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time out and joining in. Well. Um, Whatever may be the reason, uh, after that uh, employment data or jobless uh, data, which is yeah. coming at a 10-year high, the equity markets are not taking that down too well. Down about almost 1% for the SGX Nifty as well. And after yesterday, the sharp fall which came in for our markets in the last lap of yesterday's trading session, snapping the three-day winning streak for the index. And autos clearly, uh, they were the ones which dragged quite a fair bit, while metals just marginally managed to lend support for us. You are seeing some fresh shots in the Nifty and long and winding when it comes to the Nifty Bank.